you know, years ago, I'm from Texas, and um, I actually went to uh, University of Texas. And at University of... Yes, hook em horns. And at University of Texas, I was actually um, student body president. And when I was student body president, we had a very interesting situation. And that interesting situation was we ran the funding for the school newspaper. And some guy, not a student, came to us and said he wanted to run an ad, and he had a First Amendment right to run an ad that said that the Holocaust doesn't exist. This blew my mind. I'd never heard of anything like this. And he presented a paper as to why the Holocaust didn't exist. And I felt like I had entered the Twilight Zone. I mean, my first response is I have family members that were in the Holocaust. Were they lying? I've got a great grandmother who had a tattoo of it. Was that a lie? And he had, you know, a very scientifically worded paper that explained why there was no Holocaust. And, and the problem was I started to almost think, well, maybe I'm wrong. I mean, maybe there wasn't a Holocaust. And then I started doing research and realized that while there's a big group of people denying the Holocaust, at the Nuremberg trials, the actual Nazis never denied what they did or that there was a Holocaust, and obviously there was. But it brings up this interesting fact, and that is that we've entered into this world of alternative facts. And alternative facts, alternative facts are dangerous. They're scary because, like everybody's been saying, alternative facts are not alternative facts, they're actually lies. And this has affected so much of our world. I mean, there's people out there right now that will tell you in blogs and in, in all kinds of things that the world is actually flat, that your eyes are deceiving you, the world is flat. That's ridiculous. But they tell you the world is flat. And, okay, that doesn't really matter much, all right? Th that, that's pretty stupid. But what about climate change? Every year for the past few years, we've had hotter and hotter years every month, hotter than the month before. Down in Houston, we didn't even have winter this year. There was, there was no winter. We see it with our, with our eyes, right? We see the polar ice caps melting. We see drought. We see unbelievable feats of weather. And yet, there's a huge public movement to say, now this is all not true. This is a hoax or that humans don't have anything to do with it. How is that possible that we could have a bunch of scientists 97% of scientists tell you that there is climate change, that we are a part of it, and yet we don't believe it. And media is part of the problem because they'll put on a show one scientist that says there is global warming and one scientist that says there isn't. That's a false equivalency. They should put 97 scientists in there with the other scientists, but that's just not how it works. The very powerful and the very stupid have one thing in common. They don't alter their views to fit the facts. They alter the facts to fit their views which can be uncomfortable if you happen to be the one who's getting damaged by that. And the problem I think that's out there right now, whether you're looking at global warming or whether the world is round or whether you're looking at food and whether a plant-based diet is good for you, is that there's too much information out there. I mean, we could get information so easily. You guys know what PubMed is? PubMed is a list of all the different articles that are out there, and you could basically find on PubMed an article to support anything you believe. But information is not knowledge. Knowledge takes experience. Knowledge takes learning in how to identify which information is good and which information is bad and what could be applied in a clinical setting. And that's what a lot of people just don't have. The problem is that there's people that don't have that knowledge, but are pretty sure that the information they have is correct. And there's a lot of people that are sheep and will follow them. And we've been sold snake oil for years and years and years, and we're being sold it again. The snake oil works when we're told things that we blatantly see that are false, and yet we see it again. You know, and they tried this with tobacco, okay? In the beginning, they didn't just say that tobacco wasn't bad for you. They actually said tobacco was good for you. It wasn't just that it wasn't bad for you. It was actually good for you. And we're starting to see that now. War is peace. Freedom is slavery. You know, they could tell you just about anything, and we're supposed to believe it, and some people do. And that's really dangerous because it gets you to believe things like this, that you could eat fat to get thin. Fat, which has nine calories per gram versus a carb, which has four. Double the calories per gram, double the calorie density. 
Can you eat fat to get thin? Can you eat butter and have it be good for your heart? The crazy thing about this, and I'll talk about it in my talk tomorrow, is that the science is so bad that shows that saturated fat, first of all, it doesn't show that saturated fat is good for you. It questions whether saturated fat may not be as bad for you. It was funded by the dairy industry. And yet, Time Magazine runs an article saying butter is back. It's ludicrous. It's absolutely crazy, and yet it's the world we live in. You actually have people saying the benefits of red meat. The benefits of red meat. The World Health Organization got together and studied thousands and thousands and thousands of articles. They had a panel of some of the smartest people you've ever met, and they listed meat, red meat, as a type 2A carcinogen, which means it probably causes cancer. And processed meat is listed as a type 1, meaning it causes cancer. The other type 1 carcinogens are plutonium, arsenic, and tobacco, and Subway sandwiches. <laughs> I go into my hospital where we have a cancer center, and we're serving bacon every morning. It's absolutely ludicrous that that could be possible. And then I see things on, <laughs> on the internet, you know. This article drove me, long-term vegetarian diet changes human DNA, raising the risk of cancer and heart disease. Really? With what paper? There's no paper. They, they come up all the time, these, these arguments against being vegan or against plant-based diets. And when I look at them, when I try to look for the meat of it, I try to stay objective. Maybe I don't know everything. Maybe the, I, I might be wrong. But again and again, I'm disappointed with their science. In fact, when you look at many different studies, and there have been several meta-analysis now, which means they've looked at multiple different studies and come together, and you could see that vegetarians and vegans have less risk of heart disease, less risks of uh, cancer. Um, in, in this study, you could see that the Epic Oxford and the Heidelberg study, the vegans didn't do as well, but in all the ones that are to the right of the line show that they had a decreased risk of early death. Now, the Heidelberg and the Epic Oxford, if you look at what those people were eating, yeah, they're vegan. You know, if you tell me you're eating a vegan diet, that doesn't tell me much. I mean, what's a vegan diet? It could be Oreos, which are vegan, oddly enough. It could be just nothing but vegan nuggets. And so that's not going to be a healthy diet. And if you look at those studies, those people only got about 20 grams of fiber a day. I mean, I get like 40 grams of fiber for breakfast. So, you know, that's just not a healthy vegan diet, so that's not applicable, but in general, uh, vegans live longer, they have less heart disease. And if you look at the Blue Zone study, and you look at one thing that is very much in common amongst all the Blue Zone studies is they eat a predominantly plant-based diet. And in fact, one of the healthiest subgroups of the Blue Zones are the vegans that live in the Adventist Health in, in Loma Linda, California. But the nonsense is all over the web. Like, I saw this, vegans suck at science. Here's the proof. You, you can imagine I went crazy when I saw this. Vegan Second Science by Mike Sheridan, no letters past the name, right? So I had to find out, like, okay, Mike, who's so good at science, who are you? This is Mike Sheridan. Now, the, how old is Mike Sheridan? Is he 16 or 18? I can't quite tell. But I looked all over for Mike, uh, you know, trying to find out about Mike. I saw over there that Dr. Jamie Richards, I don't know who that is, says Mike is a super smart dude. He's a super smart dude. Okay, he's got that going for him. Maybe he knows more about science than I do because he's a super smart dude. He did write a book, um, but best I could tell is he got his uh, diploma from the Internet of Google um, because I couldn't find any degrees. I couldn't find any scientific publications. I did uh, find that he wrote a book that says, uh, Eat Me and Don't Jog. That was his paper. Uh, and, you know, that's not going to work. But, I, you know, I'm not going to argue with him because uh, it's like arguing with a pigeon. Uh, you can't lower yourself. There's, there's nothing I could say. It's like, it's like, <laughs> it's like Trump, uh, it's like, you know, Trump said he could go into the street and shoot someone and no one would care. There's nothing I could say to Mike to change his mind. And Mike's not my audience. My audience is people that are seriously concerned about their health and want to know the real facts about the issues. And, you know, the, this internet has really gotten in the way of that. I mean, there's people that, that you know, I tell them they haven't, they, they've forgotten Abe Lincoln's wise words, which are, don't believe everything you read on the internet. Uh, and I see this all the time, okay? So I'll take my kids. Here are my kids, my, my beautiful girls, 
uh, and there they are eating their crudite at lunch. And I'll be with friends, and their friend will be sitting next to them eating this, okay? But here's the crazy thing about it, all right? My friend will say to me, aren't you worried about what your kids are eating? I'll be like, what do you mean? I mean, your kid's eating a hot dog. A hot dog is a class one carcinogen. You might as well give them a cigarette. And they'll be like, yeah, but I know, but aren't you worried that they're eating too much fruit? Because all of a sudden fruit on the internet is bad for you. Let me tell you something right now. If a doctor or a nutritionist or a website says fruit is bad for you, you can walk out of that office, all right? Because there's never been a single published literature that says that fruit is bad for you. Fruit is fantastic for you. It's so good for you. Their kids are eating no fruit whatsoever. My kids are eating fruit, and they've got the nerve to ask me whether my kids are, are doing okay. And really, what, what it comes down to, they're worried that your kids are eating too many carbs, right? It's all carbs. Aren't they going to get fat on carbs? It, carbs do not make you fat, all right? Carbs do not make you fat. Carbs are... Yeah, the stupidity burns anytime t someone tells me this, that carbs make you fat. Because if you know science, you know that the, the, the healthiest diets in the world are carb-heavy. You'll hear people talk a lot about the, the, the Mediterranean diet, right? Mediterranean diet is the best diet. That's what people tell you. Well, what is the Mediterranean diet? It is a very carb-heavy diet. And when you think about it, our bodies, you hear people say, well, if I don't get enough protein then I don't have any energy. Your body doesn't use protein for energy. It mainly uses carbs for energy. And carbs are what make your body run. And the thing about it is, I I've studied this over and over again. It's not a Google degree that allows me to tell you this. It's after years and years and tons and tons of study of this. And what it turns out is that your body can't even turn carbs to fat. Well, it can, but it uses a lot of energy to turn carbs to fat, and it only does it when you've totally saturated all of your carb stores and you've eaten excess calories, and it's very, very rare that's going to happen. But now, if you eat fat, you guys are going to hear from Dr. McDougal later, and I love his one line, the fat you eat is the fat you wear. And in fact, it's very true. If you radioactively label fat, it will go down and it gets stored in your fat. All the study has led me to, I think this quote by Dr. Fontana is absolutely perfect. At the individual level, reducing the intake of calories by increasing the consumption of a variety of minimally processed foods and decreasing uh, meat helps with the environment, helps with CO2 production, violent weather, et cetera, et cetera. Our diet is perfect, not just for you, but for your, your health, the health of the environment, the health of the animals. But yet, when there's doubt out there, when there's doubt, when someone's sitting there saying, okay, well, maybe it's good for all those things, maybe it's not. And when there's doubt and when there's confusion, well, then you start choosing taste over all these things. What are some other vegan myths that are out there? What do you guys hear? What's the big vegan myth? Protein, right? Protein. When you meet another vegan and you're both happy, but then you both die of protein deficiency. You know, I'm going to talk about protein tomorrow, so I'm not going to get into it. wrote a whole book about it. I'll get into that in details. If you haven't seen my talk and want to know more about protein. But obviously, vegans are not protein deficient. I mean, is Mr. Delgado here protein deficient? I think not. Um, and, you know, the bottom line is, it, like, like Chef AJ said, they're always like, where do you get your protein? Plants have protein. Plants have lots of protein. There's tons of different places you could get plant protein. What about B12? You hear that? Oh, my God, you're going to be B12 deficient. As a doctor, I see a lot of meat eaters. A lot of them are B12 deficient, all right? There's B12 deficiency because B12 comes from bacteria. We should be eating our bacteria, but we're not eating our bacteria anymore. But you know what? A small little pill. I take a B12 supplement under my tongue once a week, and that fixes this huge problem that it's made out to be in the meat. Oh, my God, you're going to be B12 deficient. The other weird thing to me is that when they did the EPIC studies where they looked at large groups of vegans, they did find B12 deficiency. And they said, well, they should have heart disease. Because if you're B12 deficient, your homocysteine levels rise. And we know that if homocysteine goes up, you get heart disease. But guess what? The vegans didn't have heart disease. And they didn't have neurological problems. I'm not saying go and be B12 deficient. 
But I haven't seen the disease that is supposed to come from this B12 deficiency that these vegans have. There's a lot of vitamin and mineral deficiencies. I mean, every patient I see is vitamin deficient. And yet, when they looked at, in the NHANES data, when they looked at vegans and vegetarians and they compared them to their omnivore counterparts, they saw that vegans, people seem, this alternative fact that vegans are somehow vitamin deficient makes absolutely no sense to me because we eat the most vitamin nutrient dense diet that there's out there by far. And so we lead the way in vitamin A and C and E and thiamine, riboflavin and folate. There's a fiber deficiency in this country, and yet we are getting plenty of fiber. And we're getting plenty of calcium. That's the other big myth, right? Is that, oh, vegans don't get enough calcium and so they're going to have bone disease. You know, the milk industry tells you, you got to drink milk if you want to have strong bones. The problem is, when you look at countries that drink the most milk, they have the weakest bones. So how does that make sense? Well, when you drink, when you're eating animal protein, that's acid. And your body's got to buffer that acid. And in order to buffer that acid, it takes calcium from the bones and sends it to the urine, and then you get bone disease. Now, they did a study where they looked at vegans in the, in the EPIC study, and they did have a higher rate of osteoporosis. But these were ethical vegans. So they were eating the Oreos. They weren't eating the plants. They only got about 18 grams of fiber a day. So you know they're not eating a lot of plants. And they got less than 500 grams of calcium a day, which you could get easily by eating a salad. And so when they took out the group of vegans that were getting less than 500 calories a day, uh, 500 grams of calcium a day, everything was fine. Then there was no bone disease. And so all you need is 500 grams of calcium, and you could get that so easily. There's so many foods with calcium in it. Um, a lot of good foods, a lot of tasty foods, and it's very easy to get that very minimal amount of calcium. What about iron? People are like, well, vegans are iron deficient. And guess what? We do have lower iron stores than meat eaters. But you know what? That's good for you. In fact, there's a lot of aging research that suggests that very high iron gets stored in cells and causes cells to die. And so having low iron actually may be very beneficial to us. And we're not getting heme iron, which is the worst iron out there. Heme iron is very oxidizing and may contribute to diabetes and heart disease. You need about 8 to 11 milligrams of uh, iron a day if you're a male, 8 to 18. And you can see just one cup of soybeans. You know, you're sitting at a Japanese restaurant getting your vegan sushi and have some uh, edamame, and you've got 8 grams of fiber right there. What about this, that eating vegetables causes hypothyroidism? You guys heard this one? This to me, it's so funny to me because a patient will come to me and they'll be like, I went to my doctor and I'm hypothyroid. He says it's because of my vegan diet. And I think to myself, well, what does he tell his meat eaters that have hypothyroidism? You know? And it's just one of those things. It's like, as soon as you're vegan, every kind of problem that you get is because you're vegan, right? I got a cold, I got a cold, I got a cold, and then the one vegan says, I got a cold, and says, well, it must be because you're vegan. Um, it's crazy, but that's, that's how people look at it. Some of the cruciferous vegetables do scavenge um, iodine. And so if you're on a low iodine diet and you're susceptible to hypothyroidism, it could lead to that. But it's so easy to get iodine in our diet. Iodine should be everywhere, especially with the salt that we use, which is ionated. And so when they looked in a very big study in the Adventist Health at whether or not the Adventist vegans had more hypothyroidism than the meat eaters, they found absolutely not. It was exactly the same risk amongst both. There was no association with vegan eating. What about lectins? Have you guys heard about this? I can't eat grains and I can't eat beans because of lectins. The lectins are bad for you that are in, the, in these things. The, and so you'll get these things, why beans are bad. Well, the lectins will block your ability to absorb iron. That's actually good. Uh, it will hurt your intestines. It'll do all these terrible things to you. If that's true, then why are legumes one of the things that all blue zone diets eat? And why are there several studies, several studies that say that beans may be the most important factor in longevity? And if you look at it, lectins are in raw beans. But if you soak them or if you cook them, and who eats raw beans? Does anybody here eat raw beans? Who doesn't sprout them and who doesn't cook them? Who eats bread that's never been baked? Just the dough. So, so you're not getting those lectins. They're being cooked out anyway. So that's a complete myth 
It's nonsense. Omega-3, everybody's, oh, you're, you're not eating fish. You're omega-3 deficient. We get lots of omega-3 in our diet, nuts, seeds, etc. Now, there are some people that can't turn the ALA into DHA and EPA, um, but most of these different foods will give you enough ALA to be very healthy. And the thing about omegas is that it's not just your omega-3 intake, it's your omega-6. If you're eating a low-fat, whole foods, plant-based diet, you're not getting a lot of omega-6. And so long as you're not getting a lot more omega-6 than omega-3, you're not going to be in inflammation. And again, if we are so omega-3 deficient, we should be getting omega-3 deficient diseases like heart attacks and stuff, and we're not getting that. And then finally, the other myth, the last myth, is that our diet is boring and that it is extremely difficult. The hardest part about being vegan is having to wake up and milk all the almonds. You know, craziness, but that's what people think, you know, they think our diet, like this is all we eat, that it's boring. Well, you guys are going to go around and you're going to go to Chef AJ's class and these other classes, and you're going to say that it's easy to make these beautiful meals. I mean, the food I eat every day looks like art to me. Uh, it's delicious, it's nutritious, uh, it's fun to eat, and it's not that hard to make. So, as Dr. Greger puts it, the most ethical diet just so happens to be the most environmentally sound diet and just so happens to be the healthiest diet. So what I implore you to do is ignore all this nonsense that's out there. Enjoy being a vegan. Doctor, you're going to be a vegetable for the rest of your life. Patient, I'm vegan, so that's amazing. <laughs> Enjoy being a vegan. I, I, I hope that, you know, that, that you keep calm, understand that we're on a mission to help change the health of the world and the people that are in it, and realize that just a small group of us going back to our friends and our family can make a huge, profound difference, and it's working right now. At the same time, don't be so calm because Earth's being destroyed by psychopaths, so we need to do something quickly. All right, guys, thank you all. Enjoy your health fest. Enjoy talking with you.